Hey, she say, do you love me? I tell her only partly. I only love my bed and my mom. I'm sorry. Yes, yes, blah, blah, blah. I haven't posted a video in two weeks. Blah, blah, blah. Complaining about this, complaining about that. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. I am the Macaroni Prince. After two weeks, here we are to talk about some shit. So it definitely has been an interesting past couple of weeks. There was... That is uh, the first time that that's ever happened. I've literally never started recording without making sure that everything was plugged in first and then I went on for like a whole minute and a half talking and my mic wasn't even plugged in. Anyways, getting back to this actual video, Black Panther is a thing that happened. <laughs> Now there's two things that I do want to address about Black Panther. Of course, yes, there's the controversy and everything that's going on surrounding the film as a whole, but there's also how I feel about it from a Marvel and comic standpoint. <laughs> It's without a doubt that the Black Panther movie has done the best out of almost any Marvel movie to come out within the past 10 years. And honestly, I'm not surprised. It's a great film. It's really well made. It tells a really solid story, but it's also sparked probably the most controversy any film has within the past five years. First off, to be frank, I'm genuinely shocked that people would actually fake an assault charge or something like that just to get attention based on the racial issues surrounding this film. Like people saying, oh, well, I was white and I got beat up and then posting something somebody else's actual injuries on the internet just for attention or possibly even money. There is a lot of, you know, talk about this movie as far as people saying, oh, well, this is an all-black cast, you know, it's a really strong black cast and a lot of black characters and things like that. Well, one, of course, it is the Black Panther storyline, so that's going to happen. It's not because of the nuance of the film. And also, there's something that I want to point out. While Black Panther has a very powerful black pride and, you know, just overall race pride kind of message in it, this is not the first movie of its kind to try and stand out like this. This is also not the first black majority cast that has been promoted in a film to even huge standards like MGM or Marvel levels of film. During the 1970s, there was an entire film genre known as black exploitation films. Essentially what black exploitation films are is that they are all black cast films or majority black cast films that, you know, tell whatever story they want or tell another story in a different format using an all African American cast or at least again the majority. And some of these have blown up to be, you know, only parodies or seen as knockoffs or just comedy movies even, but others have been box office hits such as James Bond's Live and Let Die. And also black exploitation films launched the careers of many actors and actresses such as Pam Greer who is still acting to this day and has done many films such as Foxy Brown, Jackie Brown, and a lot of others. So Black Panther really isn't the first of its kind, but it's definitely a very large move forward as far as, you know, diversity in casting and diversity in films in the modern age. And before I get into how it is as a Marvel movie, there's just one little quick story that I want to tell, which is why I actually decided to talk about Black Panther as a film. As you know, I was planning to go see Black Panther with a group of people and I was going to purchase somebody's ticket. We were discussing what day to go and uh, I said that we should go on the first day and that I'd pay for the ticket, of course. And then one of my friends turns to me and says, black people only. And I asked what they were talking about and apparently their plan was to have black people only go to the showing on the first day and I wouldn't be allowed. So for anybody who says that there isn't actually controversies or situations like that happening, this is a very simple explanation of it, but it does happen. Do I feel attacked, triggered, offended in any way, shape, or form? No, not really at all. I could give less of a shit, but I just want to make that point clear to anybody who, you know, might discredit the idea of there actually being controversy around this film in that way. Way. From a comic and movie standpoint, I do feel that Marvel's Black Panther is one of their strongest films yet. With an origin story such as Black Panther's, which is so tribally motivated, you know, and really a classic story, it was really interesting to see how they would work in all the new tech and all the nuances and technical advances that we have in this time, and I think that they perfectly meshed them together in all the action sequences and in all the tech and the gear and all the way that the suits were made and things like that, and I just think that this was a really good step for Marvel, and I think that it's going to push them towards Infinity War being probably one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Overall, solid movie, hopefully we get over this bullshit, and that's really all I have to say on Black Panther.
There's a couple other things that I want to address in this video and the second one's really not as important but the first one is is that we have passed the February 20 deadline meaning that no channel under a thousand subs or under 40,000 hours of watch time is making any sort of money on YouTube whatsoever unless these channels have like outside sponsorships or some kind of deal like that they will not be able to monetize their videos and my channel has fallen under that and again I really don't give a shit about something like that. I mean, yeah, it's kind of fucky, but oh well. But I'm seeing something that's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of channels kind of drop off YouTube, you know, channels that are just under a thousand subscribers or, you know, channels that really weren't putting out a whole lot of content, just slowly starting to disappear from the feed that I see in my recommended or when I search for a certain type of video. And I just kind of think that it's a little sad that, you know, these people probably were in it for the money, but there were also others that I'm sure were just, you know, actually kind of hurt by YouTube's new policy and it gave them no motivation to make videos anymore. For me, you know what? I'm making videos now. You know, I'm back from my little break and we gonna get on this shit and I got a great new video coming out soon. But, you know, I'm gonna see where things go on YouTube and I wanna see, you know, how, the, you know, the community changes and, you know, how we adapt and form to everything. As far as that video, that is the second thing I wanted to talk about. I have been filming it and I have been, you know, writing a parody song for it. It's gonna be quite a long video and, uh, you know, I can't tell you what it's about, but, uh, you guys should be ready. That's really it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it a lot. And if you did, please leave a like. It would help out a lot. I hope you guys subscribe. Share this channel if you think somebody else would enjoy the content. Comment down below if you have some shit to say. It does feel good to be back after two weeks of actually not working on YouTube and not trying to force myself to make a video. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace. Your friends from the bathroom <laughs> 4 a.m. and I'm still in a bad mood. I'm so hard, let's not look at it like what so I do. Like Baby, what you I can do. keep on crying if you sad to. So don't go and hit my line unless you have to. Don't hit my line like that's my call.